Summertime is travel time, when many are afflicted with the need for wanderlust. Anyone who can free themselves to do it drives out to the mountains or travels to the sea, anywhere to recover from the work routine and let the soul breathe for just a moment. Some even travel the world to foreign countries and cities to see and learn about the world. But what kind of journeys were made by Bach and why? In the next few minutes, we'll get just to that. One thing must be said beforehand, though. Compared to his contemporaries, Bach wasn't really well-traveled at all, and rarely got out as much as Handel or Telemann. Even the combined radius of his homes throughout Germany was fairly narrow compared to his fellow musicians. Arnstadt, Mühlhausen, Weimar, Kütten, and Leipzig were, although in different regions, which would later become the states of Thüringen, Saxony, and Saxony-Anhalt, at most only 130 kilometers apart, and at the widest point of the Pentagon they formed. Nevertheless, Bach made at least 60 trips during his lifetime. He made his first at 10 years old, following the death of his parents. Following his becoming an orphan in 1695, he left Eisenach, his birthplace, with his three years older brother, Johann Jakob. Both were taken in about 40 kilometers away by their older brother, Johann Christoph. If the brothers had gone by stagecoach, the journey would have been around eight hours. Perhaps, though, they might have even made their way through the Turingen forest by foot. Johann Sebastian left this family environment in Ordruf to see out his schooling in Lüneberg as a Metten student. So undertook 15-year-old Bach one of his longest journeys. Bach traveled further only one other time, and going from Arnstadt to Lübeck in 1705 to see the composer and organist Dietrich Buxtehude perform his famous evening music. According to his son, Carl Philipp Emanuel, Bach made this entire journey by foot, all 410 kilometers of it. It's unclear why Bach decided to do so, however, considering the money he earned as an organist would have been more than enough to pay for a regular mail coach. For his later travels, Bach almost certainly used the ordinary means of transportation, meaning the stagecoach. For traveling to examine an organ, he was probably provided an extra allowance. In any case, the extant bills show that Bach's travel costs usually far exceeded the regular stagecoach cost. For example, the cost of going from Leipzig to Gera, both ways, was usually around three taler. For Bach, after he had examined an organ there, around ten taler was accounted for travel expenses. Other comparable bills also indicate more comfortable and better accommodations by the hosts. Already from a young age and well into the rest of his life, Bach had a preceding reputation as someone who understood the instruments from the inside out, one whose favor many strove for and for whom comfort was worth paying. During his time as Kapellmeister in Kürten, Bach and six other members of the orchestra accompanied Prince Leopold of Anhalt Kürten twice for several weeks to the Karlsbad Baths in 1718 and 1720. The resort on the sea was considered a gathering place for the world's nobility. Very pleasured served as entertainment for high-ranking guests, among which music played an important role. The regular attendance of prestigious representatives of the Viennese imperial court and their musicians brought about an almost festival-like atmosphere. During his second stay in 1720, it was likely that he ran into and got to know the musicians of the Dresden Court Orchestra, who were accompanying the electress Christiana on her spa trip. The return from Karlsbad, however, was quite grim with the news of his wife Maria Barbara's death awaiting him on arriving home. Other chances for traveling included guest playing opportunities, often tied in with visits to music colleagues and relatives. Bach also performed several laudatory concerts for Duke Christian at the Weissenfelserhof and made ties with his court's orchestra. The parents and sisters of his second wife, Anna Magdalena, also lived in Weissenfels. He and her went together on several trips, including from Leipzig to Kassel for an organ rehearsal, as well as several guest performances in Kürten. The place holding significance for both of them, with him having served as Kapellmeister there in the court, and her having been a court singer. Their last trip came in 1729, performing music at the funeral of the late Prince Leopold. One of Bach's more popular destinations was Dresden, where the Saxon elector resided. Bach's first visit in 1717 was actually a musical competition, Bach versus the French harpsichord virtuoso Louis Marchand. It actually never came to pass, however, due to Marchand ticking out early, most likely in order to avoid what he realized was a sure defeat. 
Between 1725 and 1741, Bach traveled to Dresden six more times, primarily to perform on the Silbermann organ at the Sophie Frauen Kirchen. He also used his visits to the royal residence to increase his relations with the musicians of the Dresdner Hofkapelle. These included the violinist Johann Georg Piesendel, the lutenist Silvius Leopold Weiss, Kapellmeister Johann Adolf Hasse and his wife, and the singer Faustina Bordoni. More visits to Dresden came about because Bach's firstborn son, Wilhelm Friedemann, was organist at the Sophienkirche between 1733 and 1746. As a duo, they also probably experienced many of the local opera house's performances. Every now and then, Bach might have said to his son, Friedemann, do we not want to hear the beautiful Dresdner leader once more? After a quote from J.N. Furkel. Bach's visit to Frederick II in Potsdam in May 1747 caused quite the spectacle. At the time, Bach's second-born son, Karl Philipp Emanuel, was busy as a harpsichordist at the king's court. Although it might have been planned by one or the other throughout the evening of music making, somehow, Friedrich's performance of the theme of Regium made its way off the piano, and Bach's improvisation with it in accompaniment. Shortly after the visit, Bach had this musical offering printed and dedicated to Frederick II. Even before this visit, which made for quite the spectacle, Bach had already been to Berlin several times. Bach had bought a dual-action harpsichord from there in 1719 on behalf of the Kurtner Hofkapelle, built by Michael Mitke. After Karl Philipp Emanuel entered the service of the Prussian royal family, the elder Bach visited Berlin and Potsdam several times, once in 1741 and possibly more in 1745. And of course, while there, he probably had the pleasure of visiting the Offer House with his second-born son, often. Taken all together, one can see that Bach's travels always had a goal in mind. Either he was traveling to examine an organ or to give a guest performance, or because for one reason or another he was changing residence. Mostly, these trips were on behalf of musicians, relatives, and friends. On average, he took one or two trips a year, most of them being in the vicinity of his working profession. Notably, as mentioned before, the large educational and informative trips abroad outside of Germany, especially to Italy, did not figure in the Bach's biography, as they did in other well-known musical personalities, such as Schutz, Handel, or Telemann. In reality, the world traveled to Bach. According to his son, Karl Philipp Emanuel, their home by the Thomas Kirche was a veritable music station, and an unmissable one. Indeed, rarely was there any master of music to make their way through this place, without them getting to know my father and letting themselves be heard before him. Taken from Karl Philipp.